God had taken from man, he made it to a woman, and he brought her to man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore, verse 24 is important. Therefore, man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife or cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. The word joined or cleave is uh, translated in the Hebrew as impinged or influence. All right. So uh, when God created Adam, he created, he pulled the woman out of the man. Him pulling the woman out of the man makes him the foundation. Man is the foundation of the family. If the foundation of a house is broken, I don't care how pretty the drapes are, and I don't care how wonderful the fans yes, and the paint is, the house is going to fall. And so most people don't understand that. Uh, we think you're being chauvinistic or, you know, pro male or whatever. But this is the way God created him. Even in the natural sense, the way he created him, the man was first, and God went into the man and pulled the woman out. Mm -hmm. So she is the foundation. Not only is he the foundation, he's also the covering. Because she was in him before she came out of him. So the foundation has to be strong. First of all, when a man is going to support a woman in ministry, he must be strong enough to hold her. As a matter of fact, like an armor bearer must be stronger than the armor, the person whose armor he bears. Because the armor bearer has to carry the armor and then fight with the armor with the person whose armor he's carrying. So you have to be strong enough to carry somebody else's armor and then fight with them. Just like with Jonathan and with his armor bearer. You have to be stronger. So, uh, first of all, like I said before, if a man is not securing himself, he cannot support his woman because you cannot strengthen anything you're jealous of. Oh, I like that. Anything I that you're like intimidated that. by, you can't serve it. I like uh, that. Uh, good example, and I wish I had time, I don't have time, for, for uh, Saul and David, how David and Saul. Saul was cool with David as long as he had thousands, but as soon as David got ten thousands, then Saul is upset trying to throw javelins at him. He's upset with him. And we see this in ministry because a lot of times men don't understand where they are. Let me give you a quick short story. When I met my wife, she was already preaching. She was an assistant pastor. <laughs> when I met her at the church, she was an assistant pastor, already preaching. I was backslidden. I had been called years before and never fulfilled that call. So I could, could have been totally intimidated by that. But instead of fighting against her, I learned I was her foundation and her covering. And above all, above my ministry at church, please, y'all hear me now. Above your ministry at church is your ministry at home. Yes, sir. Because if you don't have good ministry at home, I don't care what you do at church. It's going to show up eventually. My, my focus is really what I am at the house. Uh, because if I'm, I'm supposed to be cleaving to her and, and uh, impinging her, influencing her, I need to do that at the house. And if I'm not doing that at the house and we get to church, it's going to show. Yes, sir. Now we're both pastoring together. What happened was, I'm going to make sure you get these. I don't want you to lose this. When you are the man or when you are in ministry, your foundation. So no matter, you need to find out what your role is and what your assignment is in that relationship. Sometimes the women are pastors and we're the first man or whatever they call us. But she can't be what she's supposed to be based on God's creation unless I am giving proper influence to her. Mm. Can I give you this? That a woman can take something in one form and produce it in another form. That's the way God created yeah. her, to have a womb. The man has the seed, he releases it into the woman, and she brings forth a child. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. just the way she's created. So, so you, you bring home money, and you tell her the bills to be paid, she'll pay them. You, bring, you give her a house, she'll turn it into a home. Yeah. Right, she just right, got right, an anointing right, to take right. it in one form and release it into another yeah. form. But if you give her hell, she'll give you heck, though. <laughs> so whichever way you bring it in, whatever you're sowing into her, that's what's going to be produced out of her. So you can't be a jerk and expect her to be a good person. I know that. You have to sow like good that. stuff into her to get good stuff out of her. Yes, yes. That's Sometimes so it's been so long since she had any good things, there's going to be some bad things that come out of it. The, the benefit of it is, not only in ministry, but when I sow into her, whatever a man sows, that Shelly also reads. Yes, and some things we understand in the spirit of what, I, I mean, I'm telling you, we do an offering or some sort of uh, uh, campaign. Come on, so, come on, so. God's going to bless you. So, so, so. And we teach someone and we preach someone, but it's not just money. Yeah. It's words that you speak, it's attitudes, it's yeah. action. Yeah. So if I'm a jerk, I'm treating her bad, I'm not respecting her, I'm dishonoring her, I cannot be upset if she does the same thing back to me in a different form. Yeah. Are y'all getting this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so that's something we have to understand. It is biblical for you to impinge her, to influence her, but influence her in the right direction. Okay? Everybody got that? Yes. Now, I want to add, not only is the man foundation and the covering, 
He is our, this, this relationship that you have with your spouse is guardian to your anointing. That's good. You might want to write that down. The relationship that you have with your spouse is guardian to your anointing. I'll say that again because that's real important. The relationship that you have with your wife, wife is guardian to your anointing. The Bible says you should dwell together with understanding and honoring her as the weaker vessel. Right? So that your prayers are not hindered. So if you're not respecting your wife and honoring her, it hinders your prayers. Yeah. And if it's hindering your prayer, it's hindering your anointing. Absolutely. So you can be a powerful guy and not have a good relationship with your spouse. But how powerful could you be if you took care of your woman the way she's supposed to be taken care of? So no matter if she's being an entrepreneur, she's a book writer, a preacher, or a teacher, I'm going to be there for her and do whatever I can to make her successful. Because Luke chapter 16, verse number 12 says, If you are not faithful over what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Right. So if you're not, you're not taking care of her, then God's not going to release you. See how that guards, that, that is... The, uh, the, the very level of anointing that you move into is how you treat your spouse. Mm -hmm. You treat her like a dog, God's like, that's as far as you can go. Because according mm -hmm. to my word, I cannot even hear your prayers the way I ought to be heard unless you take care of your woman. That's the word. Woo, Jesus. Y'all ain't shouting, but it's okay. That's the word. That's the word. That's the word of God. God's like, okay, I don't care how much, how many engagements yeah. you get, how much preaching you get. If you're not supporting her, it's stopping you. How much higher could you go? If you go back and you serve your woman the way God is blessing you or the way that you want to be blessed, because you will not get your own unless you serve her. That's good stuff, amen? Yeah. So number one, you are your, you're the foundation. You have influence. Number two, we're coverings. And covering, I didn't cover that very well. Covering, covering is um, the unappreciated part of a house. Because people, when they come in your house, you got some new furniture. Dip off on that furniture. They don't say nothing about how what a nice roof you got. They won't say, well, man, that's a, some guys like that's a good job. But if it's been done a while, nobody talk about that roof. <laughs> talk about the stuff that's inside the house. Right. So a covering is uncelebrated. And a covering is restrictive, but a covering is also protective. Mm. Because if I'm covering you, it, it's a little bit binding. I can't go out when I need to go out. But when it rains, it's a good thing I'm under yeah, a covering. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Umbrella is a covering, and it's a little bit restrictive, and you may get some water on you, but it's going to keep you from getting totally wet. <laughs> yeah. So some folks, if you get away from under that covering, you get soaked. You keep that umbrella above you, you can be protected. So some folks don't like to be covered, but it's, that's protected for you. Right. right. So there may be some things my wife said, I need to go such and so and so. I don't think you should go there. Hmm. You know, wait, wait a minute, babe. I prayed and asked the Lord. Now, what, now anybody, any self-respecting Christian, anytime you say you prayed and asked the Lord and gave you an answer, you don't argue with that. Right. 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 <laughs> you don't deal with that. You don't like, okay, I prayed. Well, what you going to do with that after the Lord said no? But if a man's not praying and he's coming at her just right. out of his emotion, right. then it's not going to have any effect on her. Right. Okay. So, so as to support, you have to be a foundation. You have to be a covering and understand that the relationship that you have with that spouse is uh, affecting your anointing. I'll add this, and I'm going to give you the benefit of what happens when men uh, help women in ministry, support women in ministry. When you are, uh, we have, we've had uh, over many churches, the children and everything. My woman is my priority. Yes. My woman is more important than my church members. Okay. Right. You good? My woman is more yes, important sir. than my church members. We've been pastoring uh, probably. We've been married 28 years, long, 29 years. We've probably been pastoring for 25 years. Most about three years into our marriage, we started pastoring. Okay. And I've seen people come to the church, and I've seen people leave the church. Absolutely. I've seen people come in and say, "Oh, the Lord sent me over here." And two weeks later, the Lord sent me over there. Yeah. Okay. I see people come in and say, who oh, ain't nobody preaching like you? Ain't nobody got the word in their mouth like you. And next week, I'm going over there because ain't nobody got the word in their mouth like them over there. Right. I see them come. I see them go. Yes, I see them give. I see them take. I see them argue. I see them come against my wife. But one person who has stayed with me, even when the kids wasn't there, is my wife. Yeah. Are, are you here? Yeah. 25 years? She's right there. Up, down, 
One time the folks got on her nerves so bad her hair stuck coming out of here. I said, the devil is not lie. All y'all can go. I was about that. that you know, about that much street left in me. And uh, I was about ready to lay. You know how they said lay it down? I was going to lay my salvation down. Lord, can I just do it for like five minutes? Because they're going to take me at my own to sweep this house like Jesus. <laughs> make my wife's hair come out. Of the house, like Get on her nerves and then y'all leave and go to the little church. I will whip everybody. I will have to pray my strength in the morning because I will whip everybody up in here. How dare you? do that to my wife. My wife has to be my priority. Yes. Sometimes it's, it's almost like the curtains in the room or carpet on the floor. You don't recognize it's supporting stuff. It's keeping yeah. things going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's uh, taking care of my laundry when she can. She's taking care of some other issues. When other folks try to come against me, she's fighting against them. She's praying for me. I wake up in the middle of the night. She's got her hand in my back. She's praying for me. Right, right, right. And I'm not going to give somebody just because they give an offering. I'm not going to give them priority over my ministry, right. over my night because you could be gone tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. Now I have a covenant to preach every Sunday, but I don't have a covenant to put up with a bunch of junk every week. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to <laughs> priorities, I'm going to put a priority on that relationship. My home and my wife is more, even the kids. The kids, I ain't going to let my kids drive my wife crazy. It drove her crazy and then run off somewhere and get married. But you know, I don't, I don't allow that. She is a priority because I know that if I'm serving her, that she's going to serve me. And what I get for her is going to come back to me. Yeah. You got it? Okay, so so uh, foundation, covering, uh, guardian of the anointing, faithful over somebody else's ministry, dwelling with knowledge. So what, what happens, what happens, I would add uh, Ephesians 6, 8, that says, whatever good thing we make happen for other people, God will make happen for you. You might want to add that too. Whatever good thing you make happen for other people, God will make happen for you. That's, that's good. How much time I got? I still got plenty. Okay, uh, whatever good thing. So if I'm serving my sister here, I'm doing things for her, it will never go in vain. Even if she can't pay me back, God's going to take care That's of me. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just Bible, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if I minister to her, if I invite her to preach at my church, I expect her to invite me to preach at her church. You know, get on that. That ain't right. the Bible. <laughs> that ain't the Bible. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you invite just so you can get another invitation? Yeah. Or are you invite because God told you to invite right. her? Right. So if I invite her and she imparts and she does what she's supposed to do, we're not obligated to, you know, you came to my anniversary, now I got to come to your anniversary, no. all that okay. kind of stuff, unless the Lord says, okay? I know if I do good by her, God's going to do good by me. Mm -hmm. I know if I serve her and minister to her, God's going to minister and serve me. I'm going to get it from him. So I can minister to her and say, God bless you, great time. Treat her good and may not hear from her in three years. But my brother may call and say, hey, I heard about you. Come on in here and talk. And I will get blessed. And I will get blessed better than I blessed her. Because we reap what we sow. Are y'all? Are y'all? Yeah. 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 So the kingdom of God is like a seed, like a mustard seed. So you sow what little that you have, yeah. and God is going to make sure that it is the largest tree in the forest. Wow. Yes, yes. So if wow. we're really kingdom people, if we really are sowing and reaping, then we just ought to sow. Well, most of the time, we're trying to guard, trying to get back stuff. Come on, make sure you get me, man. I mean, I'll hit you back, God. No, no, no. Don't do me no favors. Don't do me favors, because yeah, yeah. favors are reciprocal. You always have to pay wow. a favor with a favor. Right. Wow. But give me some favor. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Just give me some favor, and that's different. I ain't got to yeah, pay you yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. favor is better than money. But yeah. we, we don't want to do favors. So you want to serve. You have a heart to serve. Even if people don't receive you, even if people don't hear you, that's something that I have to encourage pastors all the time. We have pastors in the network. I have to encourage them all the time because they're preaching, and sometimes nobody's getting saved. Nobody's getting delivered. But you know, like, man, I come here every week, and it looks like the crowd is getting smaller. We had 25, now we got 10. You know, other kind of stuff. I'm so discouraged. But you can't be discouraged because you're sowing seed. Wow. wow. There you go. Where you yes, are sir. is not based yes, on sir. what you're doing. Where you yes, are sir. is based on the seed that you sowed last season. Wow. And where you're going wow. is based on what you sow right now. I like so that. it could be bad right now, but that don't mean it's bad in the realm of the spirit. I like because that. now you're sowing. The farmer don't get upset. He go out and sow some seed and he go mad, get mad talking about the corn ain't growing. Okay, you just sowed it yesterday. You right. gotta give right. it right. this seed and this time and this harvest. You gotta give it harvest time. You yes, gotta sir. wait till it's time for it to come. Yeah. But most of the time if it's not happening right now, yes, we sir. get frustrated. Yes, sir. Okay. Now let me let me tell you the event the advantages of when a man supports a woman in ministry. Number one, you get a commanded blessing. Commanded blessing. Psalm 133 said, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. He said, it is like the oil that runs down the head, down the beard, down the edge of the garment. And the Bible says, there the Lord commands the blessing and life forevermore. Now, I didn't just say God's going to bless you. 
It says God commands you to be blessed. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't, sometimes we're like, you know, if we play the shout music long enough, if we dance long Come enough, on. some blessings are coming down. If you touch six neighbors, you know, touch six neighbors, touch your neighbor, tell them, uh -uh, some of that, that don't mean nothing. Right, right. If you're not getting along. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're right. Okay. So we have the emotionalism stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 With, yeah. with with these with this with the behavior that is learned behavior, not God's word. Right. Right. Like that. You know, you, like put, that. you put me in be fat. I'm gonna breathe. Yeah. I'm gonna breathe. <laughs> that's, some of that's learned. Come on now. Come on for real. Some of that's learned right. behavior. Some you just know every time you hear uh, a flat, you know to go into. It. But, but things that we do by learned behavior are different than what God's word says. Right. God says if you just get along, mm -hmm. I will let the oil flow from the head down the yeah. beard down the edge of the garment, yeah. and I command the blessing. I command you to be blessed. Yes. Can you imagine what it's like to be commanded to be blessed? Yeah. That oh means God. nobody can stop you from being That's blessed. Right. God right. says, I command you everything that you would do that would be a curse. It has to turn around and be blessed because right. he commanded you to be blessed. Yeah. And that's when brethren... Dwell together in unity. Oh, glory to God. Okay. The next thing is, if you when men support women in ministry and move into agreement, nothing will be withheld from you. Nothing will be withheld from you. Genesis 11, 6. Um, it says that the people all had one purpose and one language. Man. One purpose and one. Did y'all hear that? One purpose and one language. They were Babylonians. And they had one purpose and they have one language. And the Bible says, this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing they have proposed will be withheld from them. Did y'all hear that? One purpose, one language. The reason why the enemy likes to divide people, because a house divided against itself cannot stand. He wants you in conflict and odds with each other. Who can I preach who? But that don't mean nothing. Okay, you won, but we didn't, but we didn't win. Right, right, right. Okay, right. when you get the win-win, it means when you win, I win. That's right. When she goes away and ministers somewhere, and they give her a big offering, guess who get the heat off that offering? I do. <laughs> <laughs> why would I have to? Why would I want to sabotage? Why would I want to sabotage that? What's wrong? Right. What's wrong with That's me? Right. No, you don't need to go over there. You know they're gonna give you a thousand dollars. I'm gonna well, praise God. Let me carry your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> You need a tie, I need a tie, whatever you need to do. Because some folks are just so insecure. Yeah, they don't want, you know, they don't want right. anything. They just don't want nobody to do better than them. And I heard the woman speak this morning. I thought about how much competition we have that has been ingrained in us by slavery and all these different mindsets. And we fighting against each other and competing against each other. But the real blessing is when we have the same language right. and the That's same purpose. Then the Bible says nothing shall be withheld from me. Yeah, I, right. I don't have time to go into that. I got one more point. But... What, just imagine that you and your household want to get out of debt. Is that one of the parts that says nothing will be withheld? Yes, it is. You want to buy a house. You want to buy a bunch of houses. Is that one of the parts that said nothing shall be withheld? Absolutely. You want to raise the children the right way? Agreement is one of those places where that thing will be manifested in your life. But sometimes we're so busy trying to get territorial yeah. that we don't get together and find out the right place. Right. Let's, let's, okay, babe. Okay, now, I can't make the money. You take it out the back door. I can't come in and then you charge it on credit card 25%. Because we ain't going to get nowhere. We got to be on the same page, right? right? We got to be going towards the same vision. And sometimes, uh, it actually says in Ephesians 5.21 that we're su to, supposed to submit to one another. Because yes. a man, we'll bring it up, man. Woman's supposed to submit. But Ephesians 5.21 says we're supposed to submit to each other. That's and right. submission does not work if you don't have a mission. Because submission means getting under the mission. So you tell her to submit, she needs to say what you want me to submit to. And if you don't have nothing, she don't have nothing to submit to. So you have to have a mission, all right, and submit to each other. When she's got a mission, I'm on it. When I got a mission, she's on it. Now, now I, she's not here today. She's with our granddaughter at home. But she made sure I had a nice shirt to wear when I stood in front of people, see? <laughs> you see how that works? There's things that are done to make sure that there's victory in the household. The last thing I want to say is uh, if any of you, Matthew 18, 19 says, again I say to you that if, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So now we get to a place, look at that, just three verses where number one, God commands a blessing. Number two, nothing was held from you. Number three, anything you ask, it shall be done. My goodness, my me being a macho man don't mean nothing to getting everything done in my household. My vision for the house. We want to buy more houses than we have. We want to have more ministry. I want you to have more ministry. We want to get those books published. We want to be able to do what God's called us to do, our assignment and our purpose. It happens when everybody's on the same page. 
even in this convention, is if everybody's on the same page yeah. and nobody cares who gets the credit as long as we get stuff done. <laughs> as long as the stuff gets done, it does not matter who gets the credit. Because, like I said, if she's doing good, I can ride in her Mercedes, okay? Up in, <laughs> she don't drive Mercedes. She, she got a Lexus, but I can drive any time I want to drive. I got a Lincoln. She, I, she can drive any time I See, I don't care because anything dirty can be clean. Right. Anything broken can be fixed. Come on now. If right. you're, you're, you're in agreement, we can get stuff done. Oh, but yeah, it does yeah. not happen if a person is insecure. So if you struggle with insecurity, ask God to, to, to help you with your insecurity. Because most men, that's what's up. Because the women are so smart, so sharp. These days, they can do all kinds of stuff. Six things, you know. And then she making more money than you. And I've seen some brother get upset. Man, she make more money than me. You're like, that's all that money. Y'all in agreement, it's all coming to the same house. That's right. Okay, and most women are a support to a man. And they want to help him, most of them. <laughs> okay, let me just say this. How much time I got, brother? Yeah, five minutes. Okay, let me close the five minutes. Some of the things that I'm doing to support her is uh, you have to have prayer. You got to have prayer. You got to have prayer. Not only you pray uh, alone, but you ought to pray with each other. Yes. Sometimes yes. that's a struggle, man, because my woman cannot pray me. And uh, <laughs> I want to get in there. I'm like, Lord, uh, 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 help us. <laughs> My granddaughter, I called my granddaughter last night. She prayed on the phone. She prayed better than me. She's just so, she's just so on point. She's in it. It's it short, sweet, and out. And I'm up there, Lord. Uh, uh, and then my wife, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. And I call forth the, the cherubims and the seraphims to come and manifest themselves. I'm like, man, I'm, so, I'm totally intimidated. But i got to pray without ceasing. Yeah. So just about every day, at least five days a week, we pray before the day starts whether it's in the bed or it's out in the front room or somewhere, we get together and we pray every day. That's paramount. Just pray. Even if you don't have nothing to say, brother, it's like, uh, she's going to be so impressed that you want to pray. <laughs> she won't even be listening to you. Like, babe, let's pray. What? Are you kidding me? Yeah, we can pray. <laughs> and at night I try. I don't do it every night. Sometimes I mess up. But at night I try to at least read a scripture to her, at least a psalm every night before she goes to bed. Just little stuff, little things. And during the day, I text her and I say, you're great, you're beautiful. You can download songs off of YouTube. Oh, oh, right that's now. what I do. I get on there, download them songs off YouTube like Ain't No Mountain High Enough. And you ain't got to say nothing. You just say, good morning, babe, I love you. And then download that, put some uh -huh. motorcars on that side <laughs> and, try it, and put it on there, release that. I'm telling you, it, it's just three little things you got to do. And during the day, you go in and you text, you say, I love you, I miss you, I think about you, I support you, I'm praying for you. I guarantee you your marriage will change. Don't be like what you've seen. The Bible says, I'll conclude, conclude with this. The Bible says, in, I think it is uh, in Jeremiah, and not be like our fathers. Mm -hmm. Because my dad wasn't a romantic, and he wasn't spiritual. And so therefore, we're taking on what we saw other people do, instead of doing what God has called us to do. Amen. God bless. Get that great. Yes, I do. <laughs>